Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies have made millionaires. What's baffling though is how with a little bit of understanding and knowledge, how easy it is to own a piece of the pie. But because all of this is so new, you may like to know a little bit about the mechanism behind this whole thing so that you can make an informed decision as to whether this space is an area that resonates with you or not. <laughs> Today, we are going to simplify in the least possible words the meanings of Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, cryptography, blockchain, centralized versus decentralized systems, and mining. Hi, if you're new here, welcome! I'm Karina, an experienced trader, here to help people understand how to achieve financial freedom using a laptop or phone. So, let's start with Bitcoin. What is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is the digital currency responsible for starting the cryptocurrency movement. Hmm? Cryptocurrency, I hear you say? <laughs> well, Bitcoin itself is a cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrencies are digital assets that use cryptography what? <laughs> for security. What? Okay, 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 <laughs> wait. Cryptography. <laughs> Cryptography protects information by transforming it into a secure format. Okay, so to summarize so far, we have Bitcoin, which is a cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrencies are digital assets that use cryptography, and cryptography is the art of encrypting information via a highly sophisticated mathematical problem-solving method so that it's secure, hidden, and locked. Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies run on blockchain technology. <laughs> yes, I know, oh, loads to take in. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> So, what is blockchain technology? It's a mechanism which publicly and permanently records all transactions. Once something has been recorded on blockchain, it can no longer be changed and this makes the whole process trustworthy. What is the main purpose of blockchain? Blockchain technology is revolutionizing the way we transform money by cutting out the middleman, banks and institutions through the use of a decentralized, we'll come back to this word soon, peer-to-peer, -peer, meaning person-to-person -person, approach. So, instead of a central bank or institution acting as a third party to regulate and register all transactions, blockchain uses a global network of powerful computers to safely and securely verify, confirm, record and store all those transactions directly from person to person, making each one of these transactions more secure and less vulnerable to tampering and fraud. Whew. So, what did all of that jibber-jabber actually mean? <laughs> I'm going to use my mum as an example. No, my mum isn't vegan for those of you who know me. <laughs> She's in fact a human expert fish quality detector. <laughs> if she gets fish at a restaurant that claims to be fresh, she can straight away tell uh, if it's been frozen after taking a bite. Or at least so she claims. <laughs> Well, blockchain can remove that doubt. Blockchain records information in blocks and then chains these blocks together, seals them, keeping a trace of the journey of the fish every step of the way, from ocean to plate, including whether it's been frozen or not. Now, many companies do store an electronic or paper record of processes and transactions, but if there is one transaction that is fraudulent or untrue, proof of this can be easily modified or removed. This is impossible with blockchain. So say this restaurant's processes or random blockchain. My mom, if in doubt, could ask to scan the QR code of the menu on her phone and instantly get access to the entire unmodified process, which establishes trust. Imagine if our healthcare system or highly dangerous manufacturing processes all ran on blockchain. The world would be safer, right? Earlier, I mentioned the word decentralized. In quick, simple words, what does that mean? 
A centralized system occurs when a single authority controls all the processes and transactions. A system is decentralized when these processes and transactions are spread throughout several authorities. In crypto, this would be the miners, which we will cover next. But before, what are the benefits of blockchain being decentralized? Well, if one of these systems goes down or is corrupt, the processes get taken up by the systems that are still active and genuine. And there is no single authority that holds all the power and control, but multiple miners in charge of verifying, confirming and securing the transactions. So what is mining? Mining is what creates the cryptocurrency itself. People who mine cryptocurrencies own powerful computers that verify, confirm and secure cryptocurrency transactions. There is no central bank or institution printing cryptocurrencies, just multiple computers that belong to regular people from anywhere in the world, resolving sophisticated and complex cryptographic puzzles in order to prove and create these transactions. Why have so many people started to adopt cryptocurrency? There are so many reasons, some of which are investment purposes. As many people believe the value of a certain cryptocurrency they have researched and trust <laughs> could potentially go up over time. Cryptocurrencies are extremely difficult to imitate and counterfeit because of blockchain technology. Cryptocurrencies aren't stored in a bank, but in a personal wallet, which we will cover too, of course. <laughs> Cryptocurrencies are immune to government manipulation. However, manipulation can still happen from whales, which are individuals or groups of individuals who own a large percentage of a certain cryptocurrency. This gives them the power to manipulate the price and therefore confuse traders. Look out for whales and don't be, but we can. Watch this video to learn the most commonly used crypto terms and get familiar with the language. Whales use a method called rinse and repeat. Simply put, when a cryptocurrency reaches their desired price, so the desired price of the whales, they sell their holdings, which lowers the price of the cryptocurrency. But what that also does is it causes newbie and uneducated traders to panic sell. As people sell their holdings to, the price continues to lower, giving the whales a chance to buy back in at a cheaper price, accumulating an even higher percentage of the cryptocurrency. Smart traders see this drop in price as a Ooh. discount and a fantastic opportunity to buy more of the coin. Traders now slowly start to experience the price increasing, which incentivizes more buyers to flood into the market. The more people buy and don't sell, the higher the price of the asset. And when whales are happy with the new higher price, they sell again, causing weak hands to panic sell, and the cycle continues. Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. Now, let's get back to the bit where I mentioned personal wallets. A wallet is where you store your cryptocurrency coins. A wallet can store, receive and send cryptocurrency, but it's not to be confused with an exchange. There are several kinds of wallet. Online wallet, desktop wallet, paper wallet, hardware wallet and mobile wallet. We can categorize these kinds of wallets into hot wallets, cold wallets, hosted wallets, decentralized wallets. But for the sake of keeping this a beginner's guide, we are only going to cover hot wallets Ouch. and cold wallets. <laughs> You'd use a hot wallet to store cryptocurrencies you are actively interacting with. This would be your short-term wallet, also known as a software wallet, as you'd be accessing your assets online. You'd use a cold wallet to store your cryptocurrencies for the long term. These wallets are also known as hardware wallets and you'd be storing your crypto offline usually on a designated USB device. Let's go back to the different kinds of wallet. Online wallet. Your crypto assets are stored online and you can access your wallet via the internet. This would fall under the category of a hot or software wallet. My best pick for 2021 goes to Exodus, but do your own research. Desktop wallet your wallet downloaded onto your computer. This would also be a software wallet. My best pick for 2021 goes to Exodus again. Paper wallet. 
This is a little advanced, but considered safer than software wallets, as they are considered extremely secure and almost immune to being attacked. You print a paper out with QR codes on it and store this paper in a very safe place where it can't get ruined or lost. This is an example of a cold wallet. Hardware wallet. Your crypto assets are stored on an external drive. Downside is you'd need to purchase the drive, but the upside is that this is one of the safest ways to store your crypto, as it's extremely difficult to be hacked, usually used for long-term holdings. This is another cold wallet as all your data is stored offline. Mobile wallet, usually an app on your phone. This would be a hot wallet or software wallet. My best pick again goes to Exodus. <laughs> but there are thousands of wallets out there, so make sure you research a few before making a decision. So, to summarize, cold storage is kept offline and hot storage uses electricity and an internet connection. An interesting example of cold wallet is a series of numbers and letters you store in your head, meaning you're the wallet. <laughs> Don't worry. Those who use these kinds of wallets are a huge minority. What is the difference between a wallet and an exchange. Many people store their crypto on an exchange, but this isn't actually good practice as an investor. If you are investing in crypto, say you buy some today and plan to not touch it in five years, then wallets are meant for that purpose. If you are trading your crypto in order to make short term profits, then exchanges are meant for that purpose. So depending on your goal, you'd either use a wallet, an exchange or both. So what's an exchange? Imagine if you went to a different country and you need to exchange your money for the local currency of that country. An exchange facilitates this kind of transaction in the crypto space via an online website. For example, you have some USD, so some US dollars, and you'd like to exchange it for Bitcoin. You'd go onto an exchange and you'd trade your US dollars for Bitcoin. Now you've got Bitcoin and it's sitting on the exchange. From here, you can either leave your Bitcoin on the exchange for a little while until it increases in value. And then when it does, you can exchange it back into US dollars at a profit, or you can take your Bitcoin off the exchange, put it onto your wallet and let it sit there for, for a longer period of time. As mentioned, if you send your Bitcoin away from the exchange and onto a wallet, it's usually because you don't have the short term intention to trade your Bitcoin back to US dollar or any other currency or cryptocurrency, but you intend to keep your Bitcoin for the long term as you assume based on your own research that the value of Bitcoin will keep going up so you will cash out sometime in the future at a bigger profit. How can you buy your first little bit of Bitcoin? I will cover all of that in my next video to keep this one short. Look out for the pop-up in the top right corner <laughs> or subscribe if that hasn't shown up yet and you'll get notified when it comes out. Is Bitcoin really a red flag for money laundering and buying illegal stuff off the web? <laughs> People who want to do that kind of stuff will always find a way, regardless of what kind of vehicle they choose. So in my opinion, it isn't. Now that you have all the basic information on how all of this works and why it's useful in our evolving world, stay tuned for my next video, which will pop up somewhere around here, <laughs> if it's out already, in which we will explore the actual steps you can take towards buying cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. Before you leave, please make sure you're subscribed as I upload these videos in order. By staying up to date, you will go from beginner to advanced way sooner than you expect, as there's enough time in between each video for you to implement what you learn and research further. If you'd like to support my channel, please hit like and leave a comment below. <laughs> That's it for today. Big virtual hug. Let's crypto. <laughs> uh oh. If there is one transaction that is fraudulent, fraudulent. <laughs> It's fraudulent, 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 fraudulent.